Welcome, citizens, to Liberty Tales from the Tower. As your media director, it is, as always, my privilege to inform you that the following stories may contain content some listeners will certainly find disturbing. We here at AB3 are proud to bring you the final part of our five-part miniseries. Yes, tonight we conclude our half-season and our longest tale, The Tower. But before we bring you the continuing tale, a quick update from the Division of Interactive Media. Greetings, citizens. The Division of Interactive Media is proud to introduce AB3 listeners to a new audio production created by best-selling novelist Danielle Tresoni and award-winning filmmaker Hadrian Royo. Crypto Z is a deeply immersive, fast-paced sci-fi thriller about a cryptozoologist named Jane Silver, who is sent on a nail-biting mission to track and capture a human-like creature known as the Iceman. Crypto Z is unlike anything we have heard before here at AB3, and you should subscribe for free right now on Apple Podcast or your favorite podcatcher. That's Crypto Z, C-R-Y-P-T-O hyphen Z. There's also a link in the show notes to this episode. This is Dr. Jane Silver, cryptozoologist, archaic hominid, agent Z02. We're escaping the creatures, the, the ice men, running from them, and he fell. He has multiple fractures to the femur, a number of deep cuts, and a concussion. I was able to pull him to this cave to stay alive. It's my duty to communicate what happened, what we saw. The world must understand what Agent Bright and I have found. Our discoveries will change the history of mankind. The future, the past, everything will change. Even if we are no longer alive to see it. But it is most likely that you, listening to my voice now, you have become the guardian of this recording. It is up to you to keep our story alive. Thank you, Aurelia. Now, we pick up the tale by AB3's returning contributor, Caitlin Stats. Last time on The Tower, Dr. Fox began her investigation into her missing husband's whereabouts, searching the tower with an officer of DCO. However, something strange and sinister occurred, and now Junior Officer Hosko is among those affected. So, citizens, let us find out what is happening inside of the tower. Cecilia, is that you? Hello, Dr. Fox. How are you feeling? Uh, how did I get to work? Technically, you are not at work. Though, you were checked in as our first unofficial patient. Enforcer Clatcher found you. You had fainted in your tower, and when he searched your contacts, the first medical facility you had listed was, well, the clinic. So we, uh, checked you in. You work very hard and need to take better care of yourself, ma'am. I fainted? I fainted. Hosko, Junior Enforcer Hosko, where is she? Did you bring her in, too? She needs medical attention, quickly. Enforcer Hosko? No, it was Enforcer Clatcher who found you. I am sorry, Dr. Fox. I cannot let you leave yet. I think the Enforcers are still investigating why you lost consciousness. Sorry again, ma'am. Fine. Call Enforcer Clatcher. Get him here. W uh, Dr. Fox? Are you in a state to talk? Yes, Cecilia, thank you. 
Please give Enforcer Clatcher and me some privacy. Of course. Please, Dr. Fox, do try to rest. Where is Hosko? Is she okay? That is my question for you. I heard you talking to the nurse. You saw Hosko? Where? She was there. I was at my apartment looking for Gal because Gal had called. I need to go find him. No, a junior enforcer is missing, and you appear to be the last person to have seen her. Where and when did you see Junior Enforcer Hosko? In your apartment? That is not where I found you. No, no, I was at my apartment. I was looking for Gal. When I heard footsteps from above, and even though I shouldn't have been able to hear footsteps from above. I took the elevator up to the next floor. The whole level is unoccupied for renovations. And I went to the apartment with the door. The door I told Hosko about, with the symbols. And she was coming back with tools, she said, and... Something. I went in, and someone laughed, or giggled, and... She was on the floor. Hosko. There was blood. There was blood. You didn't find her with me? No. After you hung up with me, I tried to call Hosko to tell her you were going to the apartment. You are a constant risk for damaging evidence. But she never picked up the call. I waited and called back, and I got nothing. Not even a busy message. Rushing to your tower still took me too long. I am saying she was there. I do not understand. When I got there, she wasn't. I checked your apartment first, and I heard footsteps like you said. So I went up, and it was just you on the ground with the blood. I called the medical facility indicated on your hood, but it was clear from when I found you that the blood was not yours. We are testing the blood now to see whose it is. If it is Hosko's. How long could I have been there? Just a few minutes? I don't understand. Was she dead? D dead? What did you see? Exactly what you saw. I went, walked into the room. The door was there. The tool was there. Someone laughed. What kind of laugh? Almost like a child. And there were footsteps, but small, also like a child's. And Junior Enforcer Hosko? Blood. And it led to her. Something was wrong with her arms. A dead body painted in symbols like some fringer. Like some fringer! What else, Dr. Fox? Where is Hosko? Dr. Fox, can you take some deep breaths for me? Where did she Flora? go? Flora? Where is Hosko? Enforcer, please step away. Now. Flora, look at me. Can you take some deep breaths for me? Flora? Enforcer, whether or not you believe Dr. Fox to have committed a crime, I will have you removed from this clinic if you treat Dr. Fox in such a manner again. The door was open. What was in it? When opened, the door led to a sealed-off master bedroom and attached master bathroom. Upon investigation, after getting you here to the clinic, Enforcer Cho and I discovered the room to be littered with fringer objects. No weapons, but cooking pots, empty meal tins, clothing... The walls were covered in symbols, just like your apartment below. Were they there? Were Fringers there? From my assessment, no one had been there since the war. Enforcer Clatcher, I must ask you to vacate the room. Dr. Fox needs to rest. No, I need to know. Please. Where's Gal? He's in the tower, right? He's still in there. Our investigation is still underway. <laughs> Dr. Fox, please lie down and rest. You are under observation, and we are all here for you. I keep having to push Seto away from your room, just armfuls of forms waiting for you. So, please, focus on feeling better. Come in. We will finish this another time. Thank you for looking over this. I will get back to work. I hope you find Gallus. Hello, Enforcer. Are you coming with any uplifting news? Are you available to speak with me? Yes. Let's get out of this room. I'm free to go now. The extra rest did me well. Just got caught up with some work Cecilia couldn't keep away. I could use some caffeine. What does Gallus do every day? He likes to work out in the mornings. Sometimes he goes for a run. On days without lectures or classes, he spends a lot of time reading, studying, taking the required tests. Sometimes he cooks, 
or he will write something. He likes to research and write articles on older artists, usually pre-expansion. Some days he does this outside of the apartment, like a cafe or a restaurant. He watches broadcasts and... Did I say sometimes he cooks? In the evening, sometimes he plays internet card games and he showers before retiring for the night. And nothing changed when you moved. He did not pick up a new favorite place. Not that I can think of. And Hosko, did she say anything or do anything that you would say was new or strange? I do not know her well enough to say if it was out of character, but she did say something I would consider concerning. One caffeine, please. One sweet. What was concerning? She said it might be something not real. Like stories children think of. Incorporeal. With ghosts and hauntings. What else? Well, from what I know of Gal's work, and from one of his broken data pads, I'm pretty sure he was studying that same stuff. Fringer beliefs in ghosts and things like that. I do not know a lot, but what if they both thought something similar? You should speak with his professors, really. And please, don't tell them I told you. I already spoke with them. It took too long to get the clearance, but you're right. And what your associate Citizen Abe said was also correct. They had found a Fringer book in the apartment and brought it to the DFR, but Hosko, she was is very... <sighs> I did not know she thought about such things, though I don't believe she felt she could tell me such things. Anything else new, then? The blood was tested, and it is Hosko's. We still cannot find Gallus, but we also cannot rule him out as a possible suspect in Hosko's missing persons case as well. But my current idea is that Hosko saw someone or something while looking for Gallus, and she was hurt because of it. <sighs> Additionally, a team has swept your apartment and collected all the evidence they could find. It has been cleaned, and you'll be free to return to the apartment in a few hours. I know Gal did not do this. He needs help. So what do you think? Something is wrong with that place. What if they never left after the war? Fringers? They raided the whole building, rooftops to access tunnels, and the mines below. We keep finding rooms, so what if they never left? There could be Fringers in my tower, in my home. Should have just demolished the whole tower, started from the beginning, from rubble. There is nothing we can change about the past, but I think I believe you. No part of me says Gallus did this anymore, and official lines of investigation are different from personal ones. <clears throat> if you'll excuse me, I have a few more open investigations to look into today. If you need anything, call me. Call Portia. Hi. Hi, Flora, are you okay? Well, I am fine now. I fainted, but I was taken to my clinic. <laughs> First patient. Fainted? I just spoke with Enforcer Clatcher. We are still looking for Gal. Flora, you could have... I mean... Just please, mark me as an emergency contact from now on. <sighs> One moment. Is something wrong? Nothing as worrying as fainting and all, but... Uh, well, yes. We received all these new notifications about our lectures and courses. The professors had some important meeting with the division heads of Fringer Relations, and now we've all been slotted time for personal one-on-one -on -one interviews. And there are new documents, non-disclosure agreements, much more extensive than two years ago. Do you know what's going on? Oh, oh, well, no, not yet. And if I did, I could not tell you, and neither could Gal after all these changes go through. They're even removing the spousal mental health addendum from the NDA. From here on out, we cannot speak to anyone outside the DFR cleared and appointed therapy sessions. Oh, I have no idea what this means for job openings next year. Uh, maybe all this scrap will be figured out by the time we find Gal. What if it... Wait one moment. What if they know something new? It could mean another war is expected, right? The last time they shifted the DFR regulations was just before the Red War. I can't go back to the emergency field hospitals, Portia. I don't think I could do that again. No. No, I think this would be more for us to know. Uh, attacks? News? 
no, I think this is something else. Oh, Flora. Flora, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to worry with my own problems. I is there something you call for? Yes. Enforcer Clatcher said I could go back to the apartment. They cleaned it, and there's nothing left for them to examine. So I am going back tonight, and I would really like some company. Yes, I will be there. I can meet you at the cafe on the first floor, and we can go up together. Yes. Thank you, Portia. Perfect. I'll finish up here and catch the sky rail. See you soon. If the apartment has been cleared, why was there a guard at the elevator? Junior Enforcer Hosko went missing in the apartment above ours. They found blood, but no body. That was where I fainted. Oh. Well, I'll be with you tonight, as long as you need me to stay. I still have classes and lectures, though. I really cannot thank you enough for helping me so much, Portia. I'm really worried we will not be able to find Gal. We will. We can keep looking. And you said that Enforcer Clatcher doesn't think Gal did anything wrong anymore. So I trust he's looking for him to the best of the department's abilities. Even if he is a bit of a grouch. Yes. I know. Wow, they did an amazing job cleaning everything off. It is strange to see it so... normal. <laughs> you can take the guest bedroom through there. Portia! Yes? I'm here. Oh. It is strange. They would not just leave a symbol, one that is so easy to clean up. It looks freshly painted. It may still be wet. What's through that door again? The bathroom where Gal found that book. It always drips. Albus is going to fix the whole system, so I am not too worried. If you don't plan on using the bathroom until the renovations are done, I can just turn off the water to the sink. It should be down here. There's another one. A drip. A symbol. Down here, look! Paint color is different. Still looks fresh. It is wet. And, and the wall is loose. It's the service panel for the bathroom plumbing. Can you take it out? Sure. What is all this? Service ducts. You can see the inner structure of the tower. Here, uh, this is the wiring for these rooms. And those pipes run the full length of the tower. When I was a kid, my dad was still a tower caretaker. We used to crawl around in these to sneak each other snacks. <laughs> yeah, as soon as I hit puberty, I didn't fit anymore. So they go to everywhere? No, this one looks like it just runs water up and down the tower and a few wiring bundles. Ree, Flora, there's blood on that pipe. Gal! Call Enforcer Clatcher. Enforcer Clatchers, I am at the apartment with Portia. We found symbols in the apartment, and we found blood. Please, hurry. I am on my way. In here, follow me. There, on the door, the first new symbols. Now, in here. The next is on this plate. Then, the blood. It's in there. Get out of the way. Excuse me. I will have them run this later. Where does this duct go? It should go from the rooftop to the basement. Did you call Albus? Yes, he did not pick up. I left a message. Do you think it is Fringers? This should go to the basement. Uh, maybe the mines, I'm not sure. This isn't the building I grew up in, and it has undergone a lot of renovations. Do not make assumptions right now. We have new evidence, so let's follow it. Hosko's blood was on the floor above, and the blood here, if it is hers, means she went down. Do you have a data pad? Sure, yes. One moment. Turn on the location finder. Yeah, okay. Portia, open your tracker. Sure. Done. Now we are going to lower it down. It is already wired up. I should have enough wire. Where is it now? The seventh floor. Fourth, third, second, ground, basement, 
It stopped. It landed. I am going to the basement. Well, so are we. Hurry up, then. Call Albus Jason. Citizen Jason, this is Enforcer Clasher. Please meet us in the basement. Yes, now. Enforcer, the size of that duct is too small for Hosko to fit down. She is a small woman, but she's certainly not that small. I stopped playing in ducts like those when I turned 11. We will try this line of investigation, then another. For now, this is what we have. Where is it? It says about 30 meters in front of us and to the left of it. That is a concrete wall. Are you sure? It should be right beyond the wall. There may be a door. I will check around. Stay here. This wall looks newer. It has to be from the renovations. That old duct may let out into it. Beyond it. No. No doors. I came down as fast as I could. What is wrong? We have some new evidence about the disappearances. A data pad is on the other side of this concrete. How do we get through? What is past there? After the war, the Tower Commission submitted the plans for all the new renovations and upgrades. And it was calculated that the new renovations would weigh more than the original tower. So they poured and formed several new sections for the foundation reinforcements. It was just a few months after the war. But it's not solid. There is a duct in there, or it lets out in there. Reeve, I'm going to need requisition forms for a camera drop. It's cold. Flora? Reeve, scrap! No, it's hot. Really hot. Let me see your hand. Don't touch anything. We can go back to the clinic. No, rip it down. Knock it down. Well, do you have any tools down here or not? Well, yes. Of course. I will be right back. Walls thick enough to be a foundation would never let the signal through. Or get that hot. Unless the core of the planet was beneath it. Here, there's a difference in the tone in the concrete. We need to knock it down. You are not knocking anything down. Not with that hand. Get out of the way. Enforcer Clatcher and I will do the work. I only found these two picks. Not much use for them now that most of the renovation is done. Here, and I will look for another. You know, I thought this would be a lot harder. Oh, I could have been a miner. and jest. Oh, I could never be a miner. I saw a bunch of electric tools. He couldn't bring us one of those? There! Clatcher, you got through. It's not too thick here. Only took half an hour. Do not stop now. Keep going. We need to get in there. <sighs> Data pad. We lowered in. Turn on its light in there. <coughs> Turn on data reading pad light 100%. Gal! <coughs> Gal! <coughs> 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 Reef, thank you! Thank you! What is that? Swing, we need to get him out. <coughs> I can fit in, let me in! Gal! Gal! Still had chocolate on her fingers from the other. She looked down at the smudges and Gal! <coughs> what are you doing? I would not Come here! <coughs> you should not breathe in here! Laura! <coughs> Gal, she's over there. Please. Oh, 
Let's go. Put it down. Let's go Order. wake up. We need, we need to get to out go. of here. Staying quiet. <coughs> Just pretending to watch. Let I, go of them. I can't wake her up. Abe, help me get her out of here. Laura, can you get Gal out? <coughs> yes. He's awake. Gal, please come with me. You can come back in a little bit for the children. I have to read them a bedtime story. They will never get to sleep Let's go one. get some drinks. Maybe a nice meal. Wouldn't that... <coughs> She's not waking up. Please. Flora, check her, please. Is she still alive? <coughs> Take Gal, he's still disoriented. In the basement of Tower 12. I need a medical transport team here now. And She's alive. Machine. They both need to get to a hospital. hospital. Portia, keep well, Gal awake. We've also found the burned remains of several small children inside a wall in the basement. Bring breathing masks for examination and extraction. Hi, Gal. I'm so happy to have found you. I was so worried I'd lost you. Is he awake? Sometimes. He keeps waking up for moments here and there. He just needs to rest. Portia's still asleep, though. <laughs> All the excitement just put her to sleep. How's Hosko? She is recovering. Both her arms were dislocated and she inhaled a lot of ash as well. She got hit in the head, too current idea is that she fell through the duct or was dragged, and she could not fit until her shoulders popped. Hit her head when she landed. But the doctors say she will be fine. Still asleep, though. How is he doing? Severe dehydration was the largest concern, but he's on fluids now. He will make a full recovery. I just want to talk with you again, Cal. I was so frightened. I am right here. You are now. And I will not lose you again. What about the children? The remains? Were they children abducted during the war? The dental scans do not match any records we have for Atrian children before, during, or after the war. The remains may have been too badly damaged. We are still looking into it. The site has been closed off for now, and a larger investigation has been opened into the events surrounding the tower before... And during the war. When can we expect to know more? I am not heading the new investigation, but I can give you a case number, and you can make an information request within a few weeks. There should be a few more answers by then. Maybe. We should let Gal rest. Can I speak with you in the hall? Elvis lied to me. I mean, he works in that tower all day. Every day. And he knows where everything is. He never came back. He got us those tools, and he never came back. I know. I put out a report, and we are looking for him. Junior enforcers have been sent to inspect Citizen Jason's apartment, but I am not on the investigation anymore. However, I do think Albus knew the bodies were there. <sighs> I want to go check on Hosko. I am very glad that you were able to be reunited with your husband. May the Archon watch over you. And you too, Enforcer. Is everything all right? Certainly much better than it was yesterday. Water. Here you go. Thank you. What happened? You disappeared a few days ago. You got stuck in a part of the tower. We did not know where you were. You were suffering from dehydration. So it is okay if you do not feel quite yourself yet. I was wrong not to tell you. And I was wrong about the book. Be careful not to speak too much. Do not strain yourself. Wait. Days? No, no, no. I, I was gone a few hours. Gal, dear, I know it can be confusing, but what do you mean about the book? What were you wrong about? Days, but we were getting caffeine. Oh, the book. Portia, Dr. Malam was wrong. Or she is teaching us purposeful lies. What? Callis, stop. We can't say things like that anymore. There have been a lot of changes to the DFR since you disappeared. 
You need to be more careful. What? Gal, just lie back down, try to rest. I need to go find them. Flora, the kids, they need us there. How? Oh. I'm so sorry you had to worry, but I need to get to them. Gal, dear, listen. The children down there with you, they are dead. They've been dead a very long time. You were talking to yourself, suffering from disorientation and hallucinations. No, I, I held them in my arms. I know, I saw. Gal, the children you held were just bones and ash. The room we found you in was covered in ash. You will be confused. That is okay. Things will clear up as you recuperate. They... they were just children, Flora. They were so sweet, so small, and they wanted to see the fireworks and meet the Mama Archon, and they were so scared. They just wanted to hide, so their parents hid them in the walls. Until the fires came. <coughs> 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 they did not know how to stop the smoke. I know. I know. During the war, the Fringers were hunting everyone they could find. Even our smallest. No! <coughs> Gal, I'm sorry. We can talk later. Please, relax. No, that's... That's not what he means. What are you trying to say, Gal? Wait. Flora, give me your hood. And your data pad. Uh, sure. No one can hear us now. Gal, what do you think happened? It was never a book of religion, Portia. It was a storybook. A storybook about Atreus and the Archon and our lives. The Fringers who raided Tower 12 brought their children here for a chance at a safe life. An Atrian life. They had tried to teach them who we were through stories and pictures. But no one could teach them how to write. We trapped their parents and sent them away. And when we found their children hiding in the tower walls, Portia, we burned them alive. Thank you for listening to the Liberty Podcast. If you would like early access to episodes and bonus content, join fellow citizens on our Fool and Scholar Patreon at patreon.com. This episode of Tales from the Tower was written by Caitlin Statz, co-created and produced with sound design by Travis Van Groff. Co-edited by Hemlock Creek Productions and Travis Van Groff, The Tower, Episode 5, starred Tanya Maloyevich, Brian Philbrook, Dallas Wheatley, Jesse Hendricks, Sean Daniel Francis, and Daniel Thorison. The music for this season of Tales from the Tower was written by Brandon Boone, and episodes were mixed by Brandon Strader. We would also like to thank key members of our Patreon team, specifically Shosuro Aho, Jay Atlas, Dearest Itzel, Jason O'Keefe, Jerry Bookhammer, Jeffrey Norris, Damian Cowder, Chili Dan Munoz, Gilligan Mungus, Marshall Mintz, Brian Hancock, James Reese, Daniel Stewart, Terry Woolley, and Marcus Larson. This production is copyrighted 2020 by Fool and Scholar Productions. Thank you for listening. Hope that the Archon watches over you.